So let's go through the same pattern. Uh, pretty simple. We're just somewhere in this vicinity. I grab what I grab. I can't pick shoes. Sometimes I can grab elbows. Sometimes I can grab um, hamstrings, obliques. I don't care what it is. All I have is just one goal. Just one goal. Actually, it's two. One is that I get myself supine slightly underneath them so that they're on top of me and for them to put their hands above me. Sometimes they might put them below me. I'll take that also, but we got to deal with one at a time. So the moment I'm here, the only thing I want them to do, whether it be elbows, obliques, hamstrings, glutes, doesn't make a difference. I'm winning head battle. What I don't want him to do is lower his head and not win this battle because now this becomes body lock passing, smash passing. So if for some reason he does win this battle, I back out because I have to win that battle. It's just it's not acceptable, so I leave, okay? But he doesn't really, he's not fighting for it, and I latch on first. So I have one head battle. Remember one thing. When I say win head battle, think of the bridge of your nose and your forehead touching. I'm, when I say head battle, I do not mean to pitch your head. Don't show them the back of your skull. That's how you end up in guillotine. That's how you end up here, and then the guy snaps your head, and you're sitting here like this. So that's not what I mean. I touched my nose on his chest here. So he never gets access to break my spinal cord line. Whatever I've touched, I've touched. I come in here, my first reaction I say is I pull and I try to get myself as tight underneath him and supine so that he's above me. Then he becomes light, right, mechanically. So my first reaction is just this. So now he's sitting here. We can't leave him here because now he'll start butterflying, he'll start flow passing, he'll get aggressive and come hot, flip his hips. So the first reaction, once we made him touch the mat, is to reach up behind him and grab him. So we have to make chest contact. So the first reaction is I just make chest contact and I pull him down. So I'm holding aggressively onto this mat. Now my second thing is that we were reversing, but this time we're gonna isolate. So we'll do one reversal, one isolation. So we're here holding on. I'm going to extend one leg and take this arm. So the moment I slide him out, I'm going to ask you to use this hand that's on this side. Might not seem like it has a purpose right now. When I slide him out, he's going to aggressively come back. So upon sliding, I block because he might come back at me right now. I don't know if he is. He might stay here. We're going to assume that he stays here at this point. So I block just in case. But if he did come forward, I'm ready to pair my hands up and throw him over, okay? So my first reaction is to isolate him. My second reaction is I would like to. This pattern goes different ways. It's not always the same. Sometimes I may grab onto his elbow if I can feel the elbow and the tension at my neckline, and I hold the rotation of the elbow to start hiking it up. This time I'm going to say no. He's kind of far away, and I'm going to sit here and try to. He's probably going to leave me. So when I first landed, I was like this at this point. I first landed, I floated, I blocked. I'm pushing his skull for a reason because I want to put my knee in front of his face so that I can own this arm. Okay, if for some reason he were to try to stand up on me, I take this leg, that goes slow, goes slow. I take this leg out first so that I can try to capture his skull so he doesn't come up on me so that I can make this trance by doing him a block to come low. But that's just a sequence that you're thinking at this point. So he's not coming up yet at this point. He's come up, I'm here blocking. I'm pushing away, putting my knee line in. So now I'm holding on to this arm. The only thing I'm doing is looking for the elbow line so that I can pull this guy down and now release the top leg to capture the hip line. Upon I do that, this leg isn't serving me a purpose right now, so I'd love to shoot it through and catch his, head, catch his calf on the far side. So now we're perfectly set to finish the Kimura. Come back a second. Right, so we'll do it again. I pick up, he lands. Upon landing, I can't leave him here. I float and drop. Upon floating and dropping, I'm pushing him away to isolate this limb. Upon not letting go of it, I can go a couple of different ways. I can go Moplata. If he comes up, I can cap sorry, he can capture the skull. Come back a second. Right, and I'm, but I'm sitting here low. So my first reaction, I'm holding onto this elbow. I'm trying to rotate it to get to, these el to get to his wrist. As I pull it down, once I crack the elbow line, I touch the back of the hip. My next move is I don't want him jumping, so I lace the bottom leg to the calf. Now I'm perfectly set to finish the Kimura. Let's part of and do it. One, two, three, four, four, 
It's almost like having a weak link in a chain. That it's like, if you have that weak link, like the chain will just explode on you. So you, you have to do them in a certain way. When I tell you, like, hey, that doesn't matter in patterns, um, actually doesn't. Uh, but then some things it does. Like, you can go out of pattern. Those things that I was saying when you're fighting for the yellow bow, like sometimes you're hiking up. Those can go out of pattern. But there's certain things you can't. When you landed with him like that, I saw some people lifting like this with their hands, picking them up. Now you're assisting him. Now you're picking up like this, and his lower half is light as a feather, and he flips on me. I want to bring him down. I don't want to pick him up. If I'm going to pick him up, it's because I'm leaving the pocket. And I'm coming in here and taking this leg or lacing under the back leg and locking that guy up. But that's not the one we're doing. And that depends on your rule set. What if you are playing masters in anything? There's no heel hooks. And now what if you're playing IBJJ and like the guy's floating high, like you got to bring him down, like I got to get him over. So depends on your rule set. Just make sure that you understand that. Um, but I want to bring him over. Right, so I just landed with him like this, and now I'm floating him. And then I see some people so eager to touch their hands. But what if I touch my hands and he slides out too far? And I'm over here sitting behind the elbow line like this, and now I'm going to lose this every single time. Keep your hands apart. I don't know what's going to happen at this point. When I first floated him, what if Ethan was trying to run away from me? And I want to be able to catch his skull. But you're so focused on here. Like, I want to be this hand on that side of the deltoid. Because what I'm trying to do is control the rotation of the, of the shoulder line. Because if, at the end of the day, if I can get this hand down here, then he can't come back. What, and I can have an open hand. I can hit. I can lace. I can do push out for a triangle. I can do a lot of things. But my goal is just to break this elbow line. Because now I control this rotation in here. Now I, can, I have to worry about how big and strong you are, right? But I have to think about this mechanically with some vision and some thought behind it. So when I first landed like that, I'm like this because I don't know what's going to play out. And, if I, and then when this first landed, if it's out here and Nathan's running away from me and I'm going, damn, by now I can't even get to this skull because I'm sitting so low. By the time I reach like this again, I lost this. And I'm going, man, I'm losing him hard. And he's backing out on me. So now that's when I take this leg out and I switch because I've lost the whole deltoid. I've lost the head. I've lost everything. And he's leaving me at this point. So what's the last thing he left behind? He left the break of the elbow and he's leaving me here so my leg can come out. So he, brought, he dictated this. I wanted this. And I wanted to isolate here, and I wanted to see if I can get a triangle in. And I want to do all these things. I want to kick out your lower half. I wanted to reverse here. I never wanted to do any of the things that I just did. When I first landed, I was like this. And I had, and I'm like this. I really wanted to land so tight on this shoulder. Come up a little bit higher. This is where I wanted to land. And you see, it's like I got to readjust them up here because sometimes they won't. And I wanted to rotate here, and I wanted to come so darn tight on this arm that I'm throwing him over the other way and mounting him. Like, it's really what I wanted to do. But now I just lost the line a little bit down, two inches. So I'm going, oh, I lost the deltoid line. So now I'm reaching for the skull. Now I've lost the skull and the deltoid line. Now I've lost a lot. Now I'm trying to play this gray area that I'm just... <laughs> Now I'm trying to play this gray area that I'm hitting this. I lost the deltoid line. I'm hitting this low, and I'm going, damn, I can't reach for the skull anymore. Now he's hitting it down low. Now I'm going to Mo Plata because now this is the last break on the elbow that I got to make either flip it over to an arm bar, flip it to an Mo Plata, or get some isolation that I make a rotation this way to break it this way to flip back to this leg on the hunt, whether this be a heel hook, whether this be a toe hold. I don't know how it's going to play out. But you have to understand the pecking order and how you're trying to manipulate this man, right? So we're going to do everything exactly the same. You did a Kamor. Uh, one other thing is that I see some people taking the top leg and just putting it on the top over here. If you're trying to break this man's arm like this, and he's going to do everything to release the tension on this. So he's going to pick his hips up in the air to bring his hips to his arm. So if I have my leg here and I start crying, he's just going to jump. Right? So I want to try to be able to hold him down. So this leg, just don't leave it random on you. Right? So you're one here. 
and now I'm losing him, and I'm going, what, um, I, I didn't lose him yet. I, I've hiked him up so tight that I realized, like, all I really wanted to do was get this bed so I could pull this guy down, and now I've cracked it, but if I stay here like this, he's going to jump. I want to be here because I'm looking to finish this, right? I want to be able to turn it over the top, and now Ethan can connect this with this, okay? So we're going to do two, right? One was the first one, right? And one, I'm just going to ask you to get comfortable going into an omoplata, right? So you did everything exactly the same. Did the first one, made them land, I floated them out, and Ethan's backing out on me too fast. I'm like, it's not possible now. If I take my time and go like this, this arm will be down here and I'll go, oh, he just got out, right? So I'm like this at this point. I'm holding onto this arm. This is where I was. He's not coming back. I don't need this here. He's sliding that way. I'm going, oh, he's getting out on me. So my first reaction is just to take the leg out and drop it in front, right? Because I don't want to go to this arm. What I really want to do at this point is I'm losing the line, but that's fine because the end product is he's got to get this hand out because at this point, all I have to do is move it a little bit, right? It's not like what I had to do before with this whole alteration. But at the same time, when he's moving away, I'm taking this leg out to reface myself this way. So now I have a broken elbow line that I'm controlling. So it's the only thing I'm gonna ask you to do. Don't let go of this arm, right? You're on this side now. I just moved down totally. I went from here to here to here to here. Now I want you to take this leg out. And we're gonna do a simple omoplata, right? When you do a plata, right, you're, you're taking this leg out for a reason at this point. You can't see. You're here. You're here. They're backing out on you, and you're going, oh, shit, I'm losing this guy really quick. So I take my leg out, and I switch. I never let go of this elbow. Now I've cracked the elbow line. I'm going to ask you to do a couple of things. Let's keep it simple. I don't want to let go of this elbow. I bury this guy nice and tight on my hip line. I pick this hand up. Okay, there's a reason for it. I don't want to get cross-faced and jumped over to the other side. So if Ethan runs his hip line at me, he's going to do this and clear me, and now he's going to cross-face me and do that. I don't want that to happen, right? So I just want to anticipate in case I have to catch him, right? So when I was here like this on the elbow, and Ethan's running, I want to be able to catch him because as he comes over, I want to come up also as being top player. So I want to be able to catch him and throw him over. That's not really what I wanted to do. But if he's got a good escape, he's going to run his hip lines at me. So I have to be able to throw him over, okay? But it is what it is. I'm here like this. So I'm going to ask you to do two things. If my hand was up like this, ready to anticipate the jump, and I don't want him clearing me to that side, so my hand's up. My legs are locked, elbows tight, hand is at the hip pocket. What did I want? So stay up on turtle, okay? He's not running yet, so my kneecaps are facing this way. Before they were facing this way. So I took this leg out and I rotated, I'm like this. My hand was up. So what am I reaching for his elbow? As I start scooting out, I'm trying to jam this kneecap and this heel underneath him as I pull. So as I land with him, my first reaction at this point, let him land because there's other alterations. If the person doesn't land, wasn't gonna to go to the move, I was gonna to go to this leg. So we're gonna imagine that he landed. So don't be the partner. That like your partner's pulling you down and you don't want to cooperate, come back up. Because if we weren't going to cooperate and I'm over here pulling, I'm coming up over the top for this leg. So that's where my alteration would be next because I couldn't get you down and I don't feel comfortable coming up and I'm going to lose you, right? So when you first transfer to this point, you're like this at this point. Come up, let him, let him. Just pull him down. Upon pulling him down, you don't own anything yet. Place your chin on this hip line. I need to hold him for a second. So I put my chin up and I put my elbow over the top. Now I don't need my chin. My first reaction is to put my heels as tight to my back as I can. My next reaction is see if I can grab this because now I can start sliding up to really take this arm apart. Okay, so don't leave your legs out. I'm not like this. I'm holding the elbow line. I'm putting my feet together as tight to my glutes as possible. And even if I don't have this, as I start coming up, it's an awful finish. Tremendous generation of power in the lower half, right? So now you have two. You had the first one, right, where you did a Kimura. But on the second one, I'm jumping ahead, right? Because it happened so fast. On the first float, I was like this. And what I really wanted to do is see if I could recollect him. Now I've caught him with a head and pinch. And now it's like he's like, but he's running too quick on me. So I'm like, oh, oh, I can't let him go. 
right? So now we're starting to have an issue that he's really leaving me. And now I'm starting to lose it. Look where the elbow line is now. It's starting to get super low, and there's no way to recollect the top. So as he's backing out, my first reaction, I throw it over. I transfer a small transfer about four to six inches that way. Now I have the elbow line locked in the middle. I don't want him jumping. So my first reaction is a figure four, so I don't lose this elbow. I tuck the hand to that pocket. How my hands? I'm ready to catch him, right? Because I may take this toe hold. So even if I was going to take the toe hold, the lace would be like this. So my first reaction is put my hands up. I'm looking for his toes. I'm looking for his hip. I'm looking to keep backing out and break the hip. If I'm breaking the hip, we don't have anything yet. I'm holding. I'm putting my chin over. I got my elbow up over the top. Now everything he does is anywhere we go from this point is based on him now. Because he's going to carry me off his back socket. I would love to be able to put my fingertips together. It's not the end of the world. I don't try to move from here. I try to do one thing, retract my feet as tight to me as possible so that I can stand vertical. That's what I really wanted to do. So if anything was, if I was standing vertical, but I can't stand vertical with my feet out here, okay? I don't want to lose this elbow line. I'm sitting right back at it. So now you start to understand this pecking order, like I'm losing it three inches, two more inches, one more inch. Like you don't have the move anymore. You already, we're at letter, at letter D. And B and C left you already. Those are B and C before. So we're going to do letter A, jump to the last one where he backs out. Bottom player, sorry, sorry. yeah. Uh, bottom player, sorry about that. Yeah. He didn't say anything. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think he was real. Yeah, yeah. Uh, bottom player, try to be, um, try to be conscious in the moment, and feed him the correct move. Like you're backing out. Don't, he's not switching to a no plot if he's sitting below on top of that deltoid line. Why? Like you, you don't even have, you can't even get your leg out. Like, and now he's gonna sit, he, even on his jump over, he's gonna be sitting so tight on you when you clear his head that when his jump is just like basically sit backwards on the hip and you're gonna be on that side, right? So that's why, like, I wanna have some vision and idea of like, what am I really doing? What am I really trying to accomplish? Because if you have those memories and you, are, and you really ingrain them, this is what I do, you're just going to have a quick, faster read and reaction speed. And the game is so much fun. It's like when somebody's so ridiculously strong and you can feel their strength, you go, man, but you're not doing anything but manipulating. Like that's really what you're doing, manipulating body joints and body parts and making these wedges. Uh, Jake, pay attention, sir. Um, uh, so let's partner up to, um, um, on two, we'll partner up. Let's rock some uh, reps in and uh, get a little bit better today. Let's do it. One, two, three. Look at him. I hope you made a new playlist. So, right? He doesn't even hear me. Uh, Angie asked about when this light comes out. Is that correct, Angie? Yes. Right? Yeah. So there's going to be a couple of little gray areas. i t tell you really quick. Um, if for any reason, initially, when we went like this, and they make, you'll feel this. There'll be insane tension here where I've locked this in and I can potentially, I'll be here. And now he's sliding down a little bit, right? He's starting back. And if I can pinch this and just hike this with one elbow, it's gonna be really bad for him. It's like very difficult because what I've done is make a Y wedge underneath the elbow line to make it face that way. So now he has an issue, okay? Once I have this elbow start bending, like there, even regardless, I have no hands right now. Ethan can't come back this way because the elbow is bent. Now the shoulder rotation. That's when this leg comes out, right? I don't want to really take this leg out because reason being, come back one second. If for any reason I slide him out, right, and he went out this way, if I can get heavy tension on here, I can make stuff happen. Lift up for a little bit. I can start grabbing this hand, and now because I made this, let me let me right there. I made this tremendous isolation on this line right here, where I'm pushing so hard here. I've pinched my head and, and I'm owning this this elbow line. I, I mean the wrist, and I have this insane tension here, and I'm seeing if I can grab onto his hand to take my leg out to throw a triangle up, right? So or potentially kick this out so I spin this over the top. So you're reading these gray areas of. What's my control of this elbow, right? Do I have a Y wedge? Am I biting on to this, right? That I'm controlling the rotation of the shoulder 
all by this like structure of like, I have a wedge under here, I bit my, sh my, uh, my neckline onto here, I'm controlling the rotate, then I could take this leg out. But if I have this on a straight line like this, and, and I have control here, I don't have to go down that avenue. You're the artist, you can paint it a lot of different ways. And potentially you have a, a body like, like Zeke, that you're super long, your triangles have good and bad things to them. Your good thing is that they can be super long. If, my, if his leg is out, he can capture. Bad thing is, if the guy's playing tight with super long limbs, you can't get your limb out, right? And you're trying to take your limb out and your foot's still like about this far in. So it has good and bad to it, and it's what both sides on it too. Is if I'm the little guy, I take that limb out in one second, and I can throw that, and, but he's backing out. I'm not getting a triangle, and it's a dumb move, because if I throw the triangle up, small limbs, he's gonna back step it this way and pass me. I go, damn, you picked wrong. You totally picked wrong. So understand the dynamic of your body, what your rotations are, your flexibility, but understand like when you're reading a person and you're going, hmm, this guy's a little bit too big, triangles aren't there, it's still too quick, never met him, right? So the answer to the question is, uh, basically the times when this arm has bent, it's, it's this leg doesn't need to be here anymore, right? Because now at this point I'm coming out. But at this point it's staying in there until I figure out what I'm doing. Because potentially, this is what I said about that triangle, it wraps it up, now he's done and finished. Like, potentially, I may decide at this point, like, I can't even crack that elbow line, but if I take my foot out, and now remember I said about the little person, that I go, oh, no, 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 I'm gonna throw a triangle up, I'll never be able to reach it, potentially it'll end up like this. I can at least take my leg out and push this guy away. Now the elbow's facing this way again, and I go, okay, I'm in front of it, I've just laced it down, now I've come back again, right? So you can play this a lot of different ways, tons of different ways, it's so endless, the combinations on it, right? So. Good long limbs are good, long limbs are bad, short limbs are good, short limbs are bad. Never look at it as a negative. I just got to learn how to use my body, okay? So, Ange, did that answer it? Yes, it did. Okay, All right, cool. Uh, two minutes before we get live. Uh, we'll recapture on Wednesday through the same pr uh, pr transitions. We're just going to start moving at three inches. Three inches is where this And try your best to like think about it during the day. If you don't have the time to write, think about it. Run it through your head a bunch of times. Like, it's a great story of a guy that played golf in, uh, in Vietnam. He was a POW for five years. He came out and he shot an amazing round. The guy said to him, uh, man, you haven't played in five years. How'd you do that? And he said, I played twice a day for five years. So uh, visualization, run those things through your mind if you don't have the time to write. We're all passionate about BJJ. Don't show yourself. The fun part of the game is when you're not the nail all the time. And you get to be the hammer sometimes. So, so yeah, yeah. But everybody, don't ever feel bad because... Unless you're going Ryan, everybody is some form of a nail. So, uh, so let's have some fun. Let's do it, guys. <laughs>